You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider. This is Pancakes and Bacon with VFL, Tyler Kerbison, and Reed Bacon. Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Pancakes and Bacon. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerbison, joined with Reed Bacon. Got another great one. Uh, we're talking all basketball today because it is March and we are into madness and we got brackets, baby. It's exciting. Uh, but first, before that, we talk about the Vols in the SEC tournament and a disappointing loss to Mississippi State. Then we break down the bracket, where they're placed, what it might look like for them going into the future, um, and what we kind of predict uh, they're going to end up at. So, but bef- before we get into any of that, the, the, the most important part of the entire podcast, Reed, how are we doing, bud? Hey, big boy. It's March, baby. It's March. Hey, I was just messing around with this. Uh, when we were just talking off air, and then as you went off, I finally got. Does that look okay? Because I was trying to like show off the Tennesseeers. It just looked like I have a weird bow tie. No, you look beautiful. It doesn't look weird. No, here I'll do it with you. It took me a while to do it. Uh, it like it was kind of messing. Talk with me while back. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it kind of messed with me. It took me a minute to do it. I might try it different, but I'm doing well. Uh, massive week, massive, massive week. So. Uh, pancakes and bacon takes on Pinehurst. Um, we're not just the only two going, so it's it's for uh, my bachelor party, and uh, it's a family affair. So I got my my dad, my uncle, uh, my two brother in laws, as I call them, and then my 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 best friends. In-law. What your cousin in laws? Yeah, exactly. But I call them my brother in laws, and then I got my uh, my. I guess four best friends. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's gonna be a great time. We're very excited, very excited, and very excited. Going on Wednesday, per- gonna be, be a grand old time with the boys. Yes, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be incredible, and it is nice that March Madness is going on, so that we can watch watch Tennessee together, which will also be a nice little riot. So it'll be it's gonna That's be fun. True. We'll be- I, 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 man, I really hope they do well because it's really gonna damper my freaking mood. I tell you what, nothing. Listen, I'm a I'm a good vibes guy. Um, I I can I can stay positive a lot of the times on a golf course because I have low expectations for myself. Um, but if you combined like me hitting like three or four drives in a row into the like off to the right fairway and into the water and Tennessee showing the effort they did versus Mississippi State, I'm gonna be pissed. Well, I think you hit on something very well there, Kyler. Setting and tempering expectations. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, now Tennessee is a 20-point favorite against St. Peter's. Don't care. I'm still going to go into it saying it's March. It's madness. You never will know what's going to happen. I will assume that I will still be pretty pissed and annoyed. But if we lose, I might just be like, hey, man, like it is what it is. Why do we expect anything else? That's true. That's true. But – but that will not change the fact that it should be uh, an incredible week, one of the best weeks of my life, one of the best trips I've taken because it is truly with all the people guy-wise that are closest to me that means the most to me. So I'm, I'm fired up for that. And I, and I do really appreciate you and uh, everyone else making the effort. So we should have some very, very funny uh, stories coming back from that. <laughs> Mississippi State, though, to start in Mississippi State. Yeah. I watched this game because I was at work. I was up at the country club and I got, they got a room up there that I like to go in when I'm working because I'm remote. And so it feels nice to go up there and work and not be in the house. Uh, of course they have TVs. So I'm sitting three feet from a TV while trying to work. I really did give my best <laughs> he effort. He ain't working. <laughs> I did. I did try to give my best effort, but I'm sitting there watching it. And I actually have some notes because uh, I, I went back and rewatched some of it. And I, I kind of want to jump in here if I can. Go ahead. So basketball, basketball can be pretty plain and simple, uh, in my opinion. It can be even a little bit more simpler than, than football in the fact that it's a make or miss game. You, 
you you are hitting your shots that day or you aren't. Now, I haven't figured out why some shots go in and some don't. Don't know. If I did know that, I would be a billionaire. You know, <laughs> yeah. if, if, if whatever we have done in life, you know there's something that you feel, whether you do play golf, whether you do play uh, basketball or whatever else you do, there's an activity that you know, hey, I, you know, I just threw that cornhole bag what, how I usually – feel it and that didn't that wasn't the same results that I usually get or that was the same type of golf swing or putt and it just didn't drop for whatever case basketball is simple and it's a make or miss I was watching that game and it just had that feeling of today is not our day and it had it very early on now did I think early did I think that it was over no I didn't think it was over but I definitely didn't like the way that it was trending and I started to get nervous because I knew that the hill to climb was going to be pretty difficult. Mm. But when you get Dalton connect and I'm not saying wide open three, but an open three and he misses, you got Santi open three misses. You got Zakai, the mid, Zakai some couple bad, bad misses. And you kind of start that game off. And then Mississippi state just got that good tempo, that good, just, they're playing hard. They're playing physical. They're giving effort. And I didn't think that Tennessee wasn't playing hard. I thought that maybe Mississippi State was just playing a little bit harder, a little bit more desperate. I did think that they got some pretty uh, favorable calls in some pretty decent spots. I thought some of the balls were going their way and bouncing their way. Yeah. But it, it very, very much was like, hey, this is unfortunate and, and this isn't our day. And that's what you have to worry about sometimes in the tournament that – you can have the better team, but the shots aren't falling. Now, when shots aren't falling, that doesn't mean it's over. That doesn't mean just pack it up and leave. But to to, to, to some of the points of this game, I didn't like how our D started off basically at all. I felt like we were getting blown by, and if we didn't get blown by for them to go to the rack, I felt like they had really good positioning on us sometimes. I felt like there was a couple times where we took it, we, we, we had a bad angle and then took a – took a bad, um, like, gamble. Now, Zakai's great, but there are guys that are bigger guards than him, and if he gets on their hip, it's it's over for him. There's a couple times where down low I thought we were in bad position. There's one where DK rolls from the backside uh, yeah. block to try to come and, like, I don't know if that was even the play called a double or if he no, was No, definitely to- was not. That was him trying to make a play, but it's like – Dalton, listen, man, like, what's your strong suit? What are you good at? What does everyone say is your weakness? It's Your weakness is defense. You're strong on offense. Like, don't just all of a sudden, oh, I'm, I'm going to do something out of the blue because I think I can change the game and, and do something on defense. No, stay home, stay where you need, trust a dude that he can play defense on his man and, and, and play it out that way. I, I remember seeing that and just being like, what? Why? What? What was the point of that? You you it's, you left it open. I just felt on defense, especially, there was just like it just bad defensive decisions. It's not necessarily like effort. It's like falling for ball fakes that are just not good ball fakes. Fall, like I see Ganey like literally look like he got juked out of his shoes while while you know guys dribbling past him. I, I see guys like just almost like they've never fought through a screen before. Like they don't know how to get around it. Um, and it's just like, I know this defense is better than that. Right. Like we've seen it this year. We've seen them in their effort. Like even, even like versus Kentucky in a losing effort, the defense, like the way they were able to step up when Kentucky went on runs uh, or just like okay, we're holding we're holding them right now, so we can score. It never felt like they could do that versus Mississippi State. Like they could actually get into that rhythm of stopping them. And then, man, like going back and looking at the total numbers, obviously our shooting was bad. I thought after watching the game, I was like, we had twenty plus turnovers. Like I literally was like, we had so many, so many turnovers. And I go back and look, we had less than Mississippi State. They had 15, we had 14. It was all timing. It was the worst possible times to have turnovers. 
I think, Kyler, that's one of the best points you've made on this podcast because we're not a basketball podcast, but that is a brilliant point because I thought the same thing. I thought it was a big-time disaster in all the numbers, whether it's shooting percentage, rebounds, steals, everything. And it's not. I haven't pulled up right now. I'm going to – I'll read them off. I do want to ask you something, though. Since I got to watch it, you were working. Were you listening to it? Were you score checking in, or how did you consume the game? I was watching it. Some had it. I'm. I was driving around town and had my phone plugged up in my truck so I could hear it on the things. And then I'm at red lights, like looking down and watching it. Um, so I didn't get like a a full like I was missing some stuff as it, as it went, but like. I was getting the vibes. I was watching open threes get boing off the off the rim. You know, I, I was watching Mississippi State pull off spin moves like they're freaking no Sean Marino out there and getting past our defenders. Like I saw that. Um, and man, that turnover before halftime. At that, I was so fed up at that point. Like I was so mad. The, what was happening to our team at that point? It was like I could I could barely stomach the second half. No, yeah, and 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 that, I just was curious. I was curious how you were consuming it because there could have been a way of like, wow, we're getting our butt kicked. Uh, we're kind of making. It, we're trying to come back. We're trying to come back. And kudos to Mississippi State. Every single time we tried to get a little bit closer, they yeah. they they had an answer. And whether that was in the first half or the second half, they did a great job at that. But yeah, the field goal percentages. Um, there, th- this, this is. There, there's two big numbers, and everything else was pretty, pretty even. But they were 55 percent on field goals. Now, there's a reason that they were 55 percent, and I'll get to that in a second. Tennessee was 30 three pointers. They were 30 percent, but they only took 13. We were 24 percent. Kyler, we took 33 threes. It only made eight. <laughs> never do that. 33 threes and only made eight of them. Okay. So then free throws is uh, we, we, we were 10 to 12. They were 17 to 22 uh, total rebounds, 38 to 33 in Tennessee favor. We had 18 offensive rebounds. So they're six defensive rebounds. They had seven more. So 27 to 20, but then assists, Tennessee 12, Mississippi State 11, blocks, Tennessee 1, Mississippi State 2, steals, Tennessee 8, Mississippi State 9, turnovers 13 and 13. So once again, it's a make or miss league. And if you are, I have it here, Tennessee at the 551 mark in the first half was already 2 of 15 from 3, and Mississippi State was only one of four. They were up 10 at that moment. And you want to know why? Because it was the points in the paint were 20 to six. Yep. So as I mentioned that just because you're not making shots doesn't mean you're going to lose the game. And, and, and I get it that there's some point where you got to keep, you got to keep pulling. You got to keep pulling to a certain extent. If your shots are not falling and this is what was bothering me and what would frustrate me about this team is, we do have guys that can beat someone off a dribble, but then when they do, they don't finish well. They either don't finish well because they get blocked or they're not great at the rim or they beat someone and they try to dish it. Now, early in the game, Santi did have a nice drive and a nice little fold, and I'm like, okay, bet. Like, that, that's good. I saw Double Z get there a couple times. But still, mm-hmm. there's a point in a game in basketball where if you have a wide-open three – you can't. You have to. That's a good shot for a Division One college basketball player, especially a team to take it. Especially a team that's supposed to be top five in the nation in, as a top five team. And so, you know. And then, um, like you already brought up, very very untimely stuff. And you get sloppy and you turn it over when it's already thirty six to nineteen. That the, every possession at that point is extremely valuable. Extremely valuable. And honestly, Kyler, not to say that I wasn't sitting there thinking like, okay, we can make a comeback. We can get back in this game uh, at halftime. I I still felt that because I knew the paralysis of Dalton Connect and a couple of these other guys. I didn't feel great about it because the shooting slumps had to had to change around. But 
it was just kind of one of those games like, dang, like today's just not our day, unfortunately. And one of the things that I was talking, you were talking about on defense, I really felt like guys started to press. And DK has had some plays and big time moments in games this year where he's had multiple steals. We're thinking that Auburn game when he had almost 40 points, you know, he had three or four steals, big timely steals. Mm-hmm. But it's like coaches have always told us, and we've always heard them tell other people, if you gamble and you don't make the play, it's your ass. If you gamble, you have to make the play because if not, it's what happens. And Mississippi State gets a wide open layup. And so I think that's just what was the biggest bummer to me is I don't know if you saw it. I, on Twitter, somebody said that, like, March isn't the biggest thing about Rick Barnes uh, choking, but, like, Tennessee's soft. And a jump, bunch of people went back and were like, no, like, Tennessee's not soft. Like, you watched – and I sit back and I just said people – I don't. Did you see any of this on where I no, tweeted out? From, I didn't see from that the, at all. What an idiotic statement! Exactly. So I tweeted from our main, the pancakes and bacon account was like people expose themselves on Twitter all the time that either they just don't understand what they're watching or they're watching and then they just get so frustrated and so pissed and then that person tried to come back and be like, I'm not talking about which in the original comment it was talking about. Barnes has a softness issue in March, and which is multiple people went back and were like, you're, you're wrong. Like, that's not true at all. But even this year, and I bring that up to say, even in this game, I didn't think necessarily that like Tennessee was weak or got, you know, bodied around. I mean, there were times where I wish they maybe would have played a little bit better defense and whether you want to call that toughness or not. And I definitely thought that their effort was still there. It was just yeah. – they just didn't perform well. They just didn't perform, in my opinion. So yeah, that's what I thought. Like I, I wasn't necessarily like, guys aren't, you know, guys aren't letting dudes go through them. It's just they're not getting their hips in the right spot. You, it's like the technique wise. Like there's a play that um, Josiah Jordan James is like he's guarding the the guard out on the perimeter, and the guy picks up the ball, stops dribbling. And Josiah starts like jumping up and down, like leaving his feet. And I'm like, dude, what are you do- like? Why would you leave your feet in that scenario? He dumps, he dumps it over, and immediately runs right past Josiah Jordan James, and it's and it's a bounce pass right back to him, easy bucket. I'm like, close up on the guy, get in his face, make him uncomfortable, make him try and make a pass around your entire body, and then you also have the advantage that you're up upon him. He can't go anywhere once he makes the pass. If, uh, if, if very it, much, yeah, yeah, very much. While we're on defense, that has nothing to do with effort. It's just like, what, what are we, what are we thinking in the moments? Are we thinking about our technique? Are we thinking about our leverage on our guy? No, we're not. Or are they, or are they pressing? Or are they pressing? Yeah. Like they're they meaning to like think, they're, pre- oh, they're pressing. Oh, oh, I can. I, I I need to try and make a play. I need to try to make a play. I need to try to make a play, and you you literally forget all your technique. Just like just like the goat, and you played for him for a very short time, but you played for him. But just do your job, Bill Belichick. Just do your job. You don't have to do anything special. Just trust your other people. And so I I just think they started pressing and freaking out. And uh, yeah, and I, you know, man, I I tell you what, when when. When guys come off the bench and then like they're not a starter and you get in that ball game and you start playing very sporadic and Awaka has like two turnovers in a row. Ganey oh. has like horrible, just like balls just stolen from him easily. I'm like, guys, you're, you're not starters. You do not get the luxury of having turnovers. I'm sorry. You, you need to be on your P's and Q's crossing your T's, dotting your I's. You need to be someone that comes in and only helps a little bit is not a detriment to the team. Like, that's just wild to think of. Like, in a football sense, like your backup, you know, wide receiver is just like causing fumbles, like Kadarius Tony for the Chiefs. It's like, dude, you're not even – like, this is bad. Well, I, I, it's a great point. I thought it was a great job by Mississippi State to the two times in a row that, to, to uh, which I love Tobey, love Tobey. But like they did a good job of 
right when he touched it, they came by and doubled him and, and tri- stripped it from behind and flustered him. And I just thought that was good, smart. The, even the Mississippi State coach said he's like, we knew we had to punch him in the mouth and just be more aggressive. And unfortunately, that's what they did. I mean, if Tennessee had shot a little bit better, then they probably could have even played as bad as they did. They still could have made it a game. I, I, yeah. I'll say this. I hate – I. I hate losing those two games, Kentucky and then this one, because confidence is a real thing in sports. Mm-hmm. It's very much we talk mm-hmm. about it all the time. And so I just hope that they can flush it and say it is what it is. Let's keep it moving. And I know for me, I know for me personally, like there are plenty of times, and depending on what it is, I can be like, Yeah, I I screwed up. It was bad, didn't play well, didn't do what I needed to do, but like Going into the next time, I'm I'm confident, like I'm good. It doesn't hurt me. Now, golf on another story. <laughs> your boy, your boy can play one of the best rounds of his life, and the next time I go out there, I'm like, oh, this could be a disaster. And then I can go out there and hit a couple good ones, and I'm like, all right, well, the bad one's coming. Like I just never have the confidence. I'm just always like, the the bad shot is coming, and it's like that's not a good way to be. So I don't know how this team's like. You would think. They're very senior and old and veteran and be like, don't let these two games take away and 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 let us forget about how good we were all year. And yeah. hopefully they're like, hey, it is what it is. It's over, new life. Let's just go out and play our best ball now. I, I don't know. I don't know how I don't know how you feel if you think their confidence can be shot or they're gonna be okay and just be like, hey, it is what it is. Like, let's keep it moving. Listen, I you know, I think. I think it can take a hit to your confidence for sure, especially just like losing your first game, right? Not even getting one win in and then maybe losing another one. Um, But what I care about more in those situations, like with my teammates that, that I would, you know, be around is you have a bad loss or a bad game. It's not, going into the next game confident in yourself and being like, I can do this. Like I'm a good player. I want you to go in the next game and go, I am pissed. I'm fucking pissed because what I showed everyone was not me. Right. I know that I'm a better player. It's not the, Oh, I believe in myself. It's just like, I didn't show up the way I was supposed to, and I'm pissed at myself and I'm going to make an effort to make a difference in my play. And with that, you don't always that, you know, you don't always make the shot. You don't always make the perfect pass, but by God, if there's a loose ball, you're getting it. But by God, if there's a chance for a double or a chance for a turnover, you're you're going to take that. So as long as it adds more effort from the guys into the game, good things will happen. Good things happen to those who put the effort into it. And if it's just very much like, oh, I know that I can make the three. So you're just taking threes. That's not really what you want. You, you want the the thought process of I'm going to push myself even harder to make up for what the last game was and just put more and more effort in. That's all I want to add to it is effort. I don't want to add your three point percentage going up. Like that's not, yes, I want you to make baskets, but I want to see a difference in your tempo when you go into the game. Yeah. And, and I think tempo is a good way to put about it because when Tennessee's playing good defense, and getting in individuals rattled, then they can get out and run. And that's the thing about basketball, man. If uh, if the shots aren't falling, then if you play good defense, they can lead to easy baskets and get get in there and drive to the rack, get fouled. I love if, – if, if I'm not playing well or my team's not playing well or whatever, get to the rack and put it on these refs. They'll, they'll call some stuff. You know, get in there mm-hmm. and then just – then hit your free throws. So, um, I don't know. I don't – I mean – it's March, and so it's awesome. I would assume Tennessee's going to win, but I'm, you know, I'm still going into it like let's just see how they play, and uh, 
hopefully they don't they don't poop their pants and hopefully that they can get some of that confidence rolling. It was it was wild watching. And I and I'll say this. I watched the entire second half of North Carolina State, North Carolina. Great basketball game. Yeah. Great basketball game. And I'm sitting there and, and like Hubbard for Mississippi State. I'm watching this guard w- get, create these awesome shots off the dribble fadeaways, just looking dog. And he's just whapping them. I'm like, that's sick. And then I'm watching, like I said, that NC State and North Carolina game. And I'm seeing NC State's guard, DJ Horn, just get to the rack and hit these shots and watching how they played team defense and watching DJ Burns, like was a thing of beauty, you know, big fella down there. And so I'm like watching, I'm like, man, I just watched Tennessee. This is what good basketball looks like. And I'm like, Tennessee beat them. Like Tennessee beat North Carolina state. Tennessee went toe to toe with North Carolina. We beat um, Wisconsin, like all these different teams that were playing in these, conference championships like t- Tennessee had played them and played them well and beat them or they barely lost to them. So it's like, I, I just had such a bad taste in my mouth. Like, wow, Tennessee just looks horrendous, but it's all these other good teams that I'm watching. I'm like, oh, that's how you play basketball. I was like, wow, we've beaten them already basically, or whatever the case may be. So I just hope we see, I hope we see that team. And I will give a shout out to uh, Jemai Meshack. I, I love the guy's intensity and effort. And I hope he's the type of guy that I think can make a difference And I think you need to get him in the game quickly if things aren't going well, which is funny to say because he's not the offensive threat, but the guy makes plays defensively and he still can get to the rack and make things happen, even though he's not a good shooter. And so, I mean, um, like you said, cause a, you know, cause a foul, maybe get to the rack and, and, you know, pass it out to Dalton, like whatever, make, Okay, let's jump into this bracket. Sorry, you froze for a second. So if I didn't say anything on the last thing you said, it's because you froze. Yes, I have the bracket pulled up here. Um, what's your initial thoughts on uh, on Tennessee's – I mean, what, what's your initial thoughts? Honestly, I like where we're at because I look at every team on our corner of a bracket – and almost all of them are like us in the way that they get to March, but all of them don't make it through March, right? Purdue has that kind of feel to them that they get there, they might win the first, second game, but they never can get over the hump. Um, Gonzaga has that kind of feel to them a little bit. Now, this is not as good of a Gonzaga team as in the past. Um, South Carolina is like, the six seed, but it's like South Carolina is the best bad team in the country. Like I, the, it's very odd that they have, they have so many wins, but they've also just like been gotten blown out in games uh, by SEC opponents. Uh, and then, you know, you got like Texas too. It, it, it's just like, they're another team that gets there, but doesn't get very far. And then we're the exact same way. Uh so it, it's almost like, hey, here's your best chance to get over the hump, honestly. Like, I see this as like, okay, who's, you know, who's our first round matchup? St. Peter's, second, maybe Texas, third, could be Creighton or South Carolina. Like, that are those are winnable games, very winnable games. I, I, I want to believe that we can do that. The only thing that's holding me back is stupid losses we've had in the past, right? From believing in that in entirely. Um, but like you start with the first one. And as soon as I saw St. Peter's, I was like, we have to have to win this game because of the amount of shit we gave to Kentucky two years ago when they lost to St. Peter's as a two fifteen. the amount of shit that Tennessee fans gave to Kentucky fans. I cannot deal with it coming back in our face. I can't, I can't. The the funny thing is, is I thought that was last year when I saw St. Peter's was like, I think that happened last year, but yeah, someone reminded me that that 
St. Peter's beating Kentucky was two years ago. But then again, they are a completely different team. They don't have the same coach. They don't have the same players. So yeah, it's just an it's just a name. It's a name now. But the funny thing is, when I saw our bracket, I felt like it was a lot of very familiar names. And so it's like Texas. We've had our home and home with Texas. We get the whole Rick Barnes, Rick Barnes Bowl with Texas Tennessee. So it's like we played them, we seen them. Kansas, I've, I feel like we've played Kansas multiple times in the past three to four years. Yeah. You know, uh, we just played them this year. And if, if I have to lose to Hunter Dickerson again, I'm not going to be doing well. I'm going to go to Kansas and fight that man. Then Purdue, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to see Purdue. We, I, that's still one of my worst losses that I've taken as a Tennessee fan when I watched us lose to them, um, I guess back in 2019, maybe, I guess it yeah. was. And that which, was, that was which brutal. Purdue loss the bowl game or <laughs> March madness. No, game. I'm not talking about the football game. I'm talking about the actual one that really hurt the basketball game. Yeah. So, um, so it's a lot of familiar names. Now you're right. If we have to see South Carolina again, feel great about that one. I don't really know much about Oregon and Creighton, but not that I'm worried. If we played Virginia, I'm like, we should mop the floor of Virginia because they score about 10 points a game. Um, it would be weird to see McNeese State because if we lost to Will Wade, I'd, I'd you know, want to go jump off the balcony into the bushes. Um, so, so for me, it was just kind of funny. It's like not that I'm necessarily worried about of them, but they're just like they're pain. They're pain points for me. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's yeah. like if we were the two seed out west, it's like, Dayton, Colgate, Long Beach, Clemson, Bama, Grand Canyon, St. Mary's. None of those really have bad taste for me. I mean, Mississippi State's over there. don't want to see them again. Uh, I, n- I never want to see Michigan State because it is, though. But, like, you get what I'm saying. It's just like some of these other ones don't have the bad blood in my memory that Purdue, Kansas, Gonzaga, even though we beat Gonzaga, I, I, it was still a team that, you know, yeah. like you said, they're not as good as they are this year. But anyways. And there's I not think, as many teams on our side that I feel like are, like, hot and, like, make me nervous, mm-hmm. you know. like I'm going to tell you who got screwed is Auburn. Our our boy, Bruce. And Bruce is doing it again. Yeah, for winning the SEC. Like, it's like, this is why I love Bruce, man. This is why I love him. I mean, he's a great coach. He's at the final – that same year that we lost to Purdue uh, that I was talking about, he's in the final four uh against virginia um he's won the sec a couple times now that same year i'm talking about they beat us in the sec tournament championship game and they just murdered us so it's like this is what bruce does and no offense to rick but bruce was our first love i mean that's who we that was our our first love and now we now we have the new girlfriend but you know i know i mean like to be on that side with Illinois, Iowa State, and UConn. It's just like, golly, man. And they, have to go go to free, and they have to go out to like Spokane, Washington or something. Yeah, it's wild. That's they, they shouldn't be. There's no way that they should be a four seed and Alabama's a four seed. That that's not that's that's not right. Like that's that's crazy yeah. to me. But anyway, so they got screwed. But um overall for Tennessee, I mean yeah, I mean, get by St. Peter's, and then you got Texas, Virginia, or Colorado State. Like you said, all extremely winnable. I don't like Texas because I've watched them play a couple times. I don't think they're that good. They're, their ceiling's fine, but they do have a floor because I've seen them get work pretty good. I can't stand their coach, so I would hate to lose to that guy. Mm. All for the simple fact when he's like, they got beat, and the people were doing horns down. He's like talking about how classless that was, and he's like, we don't do that and we don't storm the court when we beat people. We act like we've been there before. And then like two weeks later, they won a game and he like ran out to the court. So I can't stand that guy. Um, but, uh, but really that's all I have to pretty much say on, on the bracket. I have you filled any out yet? You know, you bring up the Purdue thing and it, it is a, you know, bad taste in the mouth from, from before and us losing, but, when I saw this, the fact that Purdue is a one and we're a two, so when we would meet them would be the Elite Eight, I'm good with that. Like, I want it. You want to know why? Because I'm happy if we make it to the Elite Eight and lose. I'm still happy with the season. 
But if we make it to the Elite Eight and it's Purdue and we take them down as a one seed and ruin their season, I'm good. I'm good. We don't have to win the next two. Like, I, I feel great. I, I, that's, that's the best feeling in the world to take away their best opportunity they've had in the past five years after what happened to us in 2019 or whenever it was. So it's like, yeah. I kind of got excited when I saw Purdue there. I'm like, hmm. I'm just not going to do well in my belly region. If I'm sitting there watching that game and Zach Eady's just getting all these calls left and right. Like I'm just, I won't do well. That's the one yeah. thing. That's the one thing that is going to really tick me off in the tournament is if it gets really tick tacky and I feel like, you know, Hunter He's Dickerson. He's been getting them all year. I know. It's like Hunter Dickerson gets the calls for Kansas or uh, Philip Philip Loser for Duke gets them or like Zach Eady definitely gets them because he is a bigger guy. But uh, I this was very weird, very weird to see. Jay Billis, <clears throat> Jay Williams, Seth Greenberg all had either Tennessee like in their final four or or the championship game. Um, then there was the other show where it was um, Tom Crean was on there, had Tennessee in like the final four. Another guy that I didn't recognize had Tennessee in like the final four of the championship game. Um, and then there's another one that's a basketball guy who's pretty well known, and I, I recognize him. And he had Tennessee, and the only one that didn't have Tennessee, like in the Elite Eight or Final Four, was the past Memphis coach, um, uh, not Gary Parish. That's the guy in Memphis that does the radio. But um, do you know who I'm talking about? The old Memphis coach. Um, no. Okay, I'll figure it out. But anyways, they, it was wild. Like I'm watching the show that breaks it all down right whenever it's revealed, and then after that, it's bracketology where it's like the second level guys. And it was just like so much love for Tennessee. And I'm like, dude, this is scary, bro. Like, I don't know how I feel about this. I I mean, it, they've never really shown love to us before. So, but, and we've failed when they don't show us love. So I don't know. Maybe we succeed when they do. But yeah, I, I, I've I've heard the same stuff. And I'm, I, I'm also sitting there going like, did y'all not watch the Kentucky-Mississippi State game? Was y'all, did y'all miss those? Josh Pastner. Josh yeah, Pastner like, was the the old Memphis coach. Okay, it's like they, it's like they saw the Alabama game we had, and we're like, okay, this is the Tennessee team. That's I think I think, and then oh, Mad Dog Russo, which I don't listen to any of that stuff, but I heard Josh and Swain talking about it. Came out and said Tennessee has a chance because everyone just loves Don't Connect. I know Seth Davis yeah. came out, so it's like everyone's just riding Don't Connect, which he is amazing. Like. I mean, but he's he's up against uh, Zach Eady for you know Player of the Year pretty much. So I, I I understand why they're saying that, but you can't you can't win games with one dude. Agreed, and and that and that's the thing. The guy can go out and have forty, but Santi and Josiah and Jonas and Z and mate, like someone's got to step up. Someone has got to step up and. You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll, I mean, dang it, man. I don't. I don't know. But it is funny to see all these national guys. They could. They obviously know we lost Mississippi State. I heard. I think maybe Seth Seth Greenberg was like, you know, it's about matchups. Not a good matchup for Tennessee. I still believe in them. I still think that they're one of the best teams out here. So it, I, it's just weird hearing that because it's like those guys. That's all they do is cover college basketball. But you and I have lived it. We know Rick Barnes. So it's like, who knows, man. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so what's your, what's your final? <laughs> no, that's the whole that's the whole thing about March Madness. Let me say this too: Elite. If we make it to Elite Eight, I'm happy. I'm I'm me saying too. it. Elite Eight, I'm happy. Sweet anything. Let like if we lose the first weekend, I'm pissed. Sweet sixteen, I'll kind of be like, yeah. Elite Eight, I'm happy. Final Four, I'm ecstatic. But what do, what is your final prediction? Man, I I honestly feel like there's a better chance of us losing to Texas, like losing that round than the Sweet 16 round for Say some reason. Again. Like I, I have a feeling there's more of a chance of us losing 
the second round game than the third round game. Just like based off vibes, like literally, I don't even know if it's really the teams. It's just more of like, I just, that second round is stuck in my head for some reason. Um, So I feel like if we make it past Texas, who I think is going to win that, that we'll make it to the Elite Eight. That's what I'm, that's what I'm banking on. So you you're calling Elite Eight. If we make it past Texas, we either lose to Texas or we make the Elite Eight. What if Texas isn't there? Then we're going to the Elite Eight. Okay. I think we Sean, beat Virginia or Colorado State for sure. Okay. Sean Farnham was the other guy that I couldn't remember that he's on there a lot. Like I said, man. There's like eight eight people, like out of like seven of the eight were had Tennessee Final Four championship game, like lead eight. I'm like, dang, dude, that's wild. But anyway, sorry, it's going to bother me. I know you don't know who Sean Farnham is, but some of our listeners might because he's all over that college basketball stuff. So anyways, um, my final prediction is I think we lose first weekend. I just I just do. Unfortunately, I just it. it what what has there been to show me that that's not the case? I know last year, I mean, we beat yeah. Duke. We we beat Duke. We made the Sweet 16. But I don't know, man. I don't know, especially how these two past performances have been. Uh, it's it's. I just don't feel like we're going in. But then again, maybe that's what we need. I mean, hell, North Carolina State lost four games in a row, and then they just won five in a row. So who knows? That's why it's madness. Yeah, it's true. Up and down. I'll, all I know, all I know, is we're gonna have a great time and go super low at Piners. I'm gonna. That's I'm gonna right, set, baby. I'm setting, <laughs> I'm setting the course record before the U.S. opens there in a couple months. You know, the yeah, U.S. Opens yeah, we're starting off, right? starting off on number two to start the trip. It's gonna be fun. You know, that's where the U.S. Open is this year. I know, I know. It's about to whoop my ass. Maybe not. Who knows? We'll see. I'm bringing a lot of extra balls just in case. (laughs) All right, brother. See you, brother. See ya. Okay. Thank you guys so much for for watching and listening. If you are watching, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, Leave comments. Love the comments. Um, If you're just uh, listening, rate, review, download, and re-download, and follow us on all those listening platforms. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media at pancakes and bacon for our main account on Twitter at pancakes and bacon underscore RTI on Instagram. Uh, and then if you want to follow Reed, it's just at our bacon 26 for him and at Kyler Kerberson for myself on all social media. So check me out there and uh, yeah, just appreciate you guys so much, man. Let's win some games this March for a change. Please just, Please pull it out. I, I know Reed's a little pessimistic about the first weekend, but come on, balls! I think you can do it. Uh, again, thank you guys for being such great fans. And as always, go balls. <laughs>